Today we're going to be talking about Neville Goddard's statement of man lives by his beliefs. We're going to be coming from Neville Goddard's God's plan of salvation. First, I'm going to read what it is that Neville stated, and then what we're going to do is go back and we're going to discuss what it was that he said. And so I repeat it. I repeat myself night after night after night because people I think heard me and then I discover that they didn't really. If they had heard me to the point of belief, they would live by it because man lives by his beliefs. And when I find them not living by what they confess in word that they believe, I know that they really didn't believe it at all because man lives by belief. And when I say, well, do you believe it? Do you really believe what I have told you is true? You may say in words, yes, I believe you. And then I will find you after that disbelieving by your behavior. Often I would say that lifestyle follows beliefs, but it basically goes back to what Neville is saying here, man lives by his beliefs. So we're saying the same thing. And he says this, so I repeat it. Now, whatever the subject matter is that he's talking about, he's saying that I repeat it night after night after night. And in this case, he says, but people, I think they heard me. Then I discovered that they didn't really. So a lot of times people say that they understand what's being said, but in saying it, that's not enough. When we truly believe what it is that we say that we believe, we begin living according to that belief. That's just naturally how we've been created. We're creative beings. So as creative beings, whatever it is that we're creating in imagination, that's what we're out picturing in our world. He says, if they heard me to a point of belief, they will live by it. So Neville agreed that if an individual really truly believes they're going to live by what it is that they say that they believe. He ends this paragraph by saying, man lives by his beliefs. Then he goes on to say, and when I find them not living by what it is they confessed in words that they believe, I know that they really didn't believe it at all. Now that's seemingly a hard phrase for some of us because we want to believe that we can believe one thing and live another. But every one of us, no matter what it is that we say that we believe at our core, we're going to begin living out that belief. So if we are talking about prosperity, for example, what you're going to do is take on a mindset of being prosperous. You're going to start being more wise in your finances. You're going to start doing your due diligence to make sure that your finances are in order. Likewise, if it's health, if you truly believe in a lifestyle of health, you're going to start to the best of your ability, whatever you believe health is, you're going to start living from a place of health. You're not going to have a poor eating habits, poor lifestyle habit and say, well, I'm affirming health. If you really are affirming health, you'll start by living health. That's the byproduct of what it is that you say that you believe. Likewise, if we're talking about relationships, if we truly believe in a particular relationship, then we begin living according to our beliefs in that relationship. We're going to either be more loving or we're going to withdraw whatever it is that we believe in that relationship. Mr. Little tells a story uh, recently in one of our talks, and he says, listen, you know, a lot of times people get it confused about sin. He said sin is simply just missing the mark. He says, but if a bank robber's goal is to rob a bank and he's successful at robbing that bank, then he did not, she did not miss the mark. They were successful in the mark of robbing the bank. Now, from a moral standpoint, we would say that that's wrong, but that's not what we're talking about right now. We're talking about you hitting your target, whatever that target is, and that target is your core belief because you're going to live out from your core what it is that you truly believe. He goes on to say, because man lives by his belief, 
And when I say, well, do you believe it? Do you really believe what I have told you is true? He says, you may say in words, yes, I believe you. And then I will find you after that disbelieving by your behavior. This comes from Neville Goddard's God's Plan of Salvation. He's saying exactly what I say week after week. Lifestyle follows beliefs. It was said of Jesus that he could not do many miracles in his own hometown because of their unbelief, not his. He would often ask the individual, do you believe that I am able to do this? And they say, yes, Lord, I believe. Then he says, according to your belief, be it unto you. Then that person would begin to walk. They would begin to see. They would begin to hear whatever the miracle was that Jesus performed at the time. Many of you are frustrated because you know in your heart of hearts that you're believing for the thing that you desire, but you're not manifesting the results. And you say, well, coach, I'm doing all the right stuff, and yet I'm not manifesting the results. A lot of times we stop at a state akin to sleep, but we don't carry it out in our everydayness. When we get into the everyday hustle and bustle of the world, we start being distracted from what it is that we say that we believe. What we have to do is what we do all the time. And what do I mean by that? If you determine that you're going to fill your car up with gas, you don't sit there and say, well, maybe I should fill the car up with gas, or maybe the gas is going to be there, or maybe it's not going to be enough gas. No, you say, well, listen, I'm going to go to the gas station, and I'm going to you know, take my credit card out, and I'm going to pay in cash, whatever you're going to do as far as paying for that gas. But you go to the gas station, you make the purchase, you put the gas in your car, and then you go on about your business. This is how manifestation works. We're naturally manifestors, but the problem is we've made it so spiritually minded that we're of little human good. Now, what do I mean? We've made manifestation this spiritualized thing that, you know, special people do and we can't do it. The truth of the matter is you're manifesting all the time. But because you think that what you're manifesting is different from someone else's manifesting, that you're doing something altogether different. Once you begin to understand that when you go and buy a carton of milk, or if you go and buy food from the store, or if you go to your job each day and you make a decision, I'm going to go to work and I'm going to get there by a certain time, and you do this, you don't see that as manifesting. But that's exactly what it is. If and when you begin to make manifesting more practical and realize that that's what you're doing all the time, and you begin taking the necessary steps for your relationships, for your abundance, for your health, and you begin moving in that direction, then subconscious mind, life is going to begin manifesting on your behalf the things that you're seeking to manifest. But as long as you keep it mystical, magical, something out there, like we did with God before we heard about Neville, then your manifestation is going to always be something that eludes you. But when you say, for example, I want to be a millionaire, and if your goal is just not to continue to manifest millions out of thin air, but you say, I want to become a millionaire, and you understand the process that first I think about what it is that I want to be. Then I go about to create the environment where I can become a millionaire. Now, again, you're still operating from that state, living in the end, the state of kind of sleep, but you're also living the lifestyle of someone who is creating millions. Many of us want to do this passively, and then we're wondering why we're not getting results. And I will go on to say, and I will continue to say, even as Neville said in this brief talk, man lives by his beliefs. Lifestyle follows beliefs. When you begin living from a mindset of a person who is creating multiple millions of dollars, you'll become a person who's creating multiple millions of dollars. When you become a person that's living from a person who's living from a loving relationship, then you'll begin living as a person who's living from a loving relationship. When you begin living as a person who is healthy, then you begin living the lifestyle of a person who is healthy. See, many of us want to manifest in our heads and we want to stop there. But 
your lifestyle is going to mirror whatever it is that you're doing in your mind. In scripture, this is called sowing and reaping. So as a man sows, so shall he reap. So whatever it is that you're putting in your subconscious mind, it's going to be outpictured in your reality or this thing we call life. I'm not going to belabor the point. I think that the point is well made. Bottom line is, whatever it is that you want to manifest in your life, you have to begin living as the person who can manifest that in their lives. And if you look at any successful person, you're going to find that that's the commonality. Now, I'm not saying that you're not going to hit the lottery ticket or you're not going to come across this windfall every so often, but then you're going to keep asking yourself, why can't I reproduce it? Because see, you're hoping on luck, but luck in its truest sense is life's undertaking, creating kind. Now, what do I mean? When I talk about life's undertaking, creating kind, when you start living a certain way, that's your life's undertaking, it's going to create or outpicture after its kind. So luck is life's undertaking, creating kind. Whatever you're doing in the imagination of man, that's what you're going to begin outpicturing in your world and living out from your lifestyle. But remember this, creators, that only you can create your perfect world, not God or man. Only you can create your perfect world. This is Coach Carlos, and have a great and abundant day.